Hello everybody and welcome back to another CB Showtunes tutorial. Now today's tutorial we're going to be creating, I guess you could say, a some of the mechanics that you would see within GTA. Now we're not going to be creating the multiplayer aspects of GTA because that is quite extensive, but we are going to be dis discussing a lot of the mechanics and of course how to actually work um, using these, uh, or using those systems and all. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Now the first mechanic we're going to be discussing is the character controller. Now for us, we're going to be designing a character controller that's way better than the previous character controllers that I have been designing. So inside our previous tutorials and all, we've been designing character controllers that run off of a transform value, which allows us to be able to move our character based on the transform, which isn't a bad idea for the most part, except for the fact that whenever you collide with an object, it's going to be having this jittery effect. It's going to be like a bum, 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 you know, it just doesn't look that great. So we're going to be designing one based on the rigid body aspect. So whenever you collide with an object, it's just going to stay stationary. It's not going to move or anything like that. So without further ado, let's go ahead and hop into our player. So what you want to do is create a folder called scripts inside your assets folder. If you don't have this, go ahead and right click, create a folder and then call it scripts. From there, you're going to create a C sharp script and you're going to call it player controller. We're going to head inside here and we're going to create a couple of variables. So we're going to create a public float called walk speed. We're going to create a public float called run speed. We're going to create or serialize first off and then we're going to create a private float called speed. Now the cool part about serialization is that it leaves the value of the float or uh, variable as private but allows you to be able to customize it inside the inspector. Uh, this way it is accessible by you but not by anybody else. So that's pretty cool. We also want to get a rigid body. We're going to call it RB. And then we're going to create a void start function. We want to call RB is equal to get the component on this object and we're going to call it rigid body. So there we go. We now can use our rigid body. The next thing we need to do is create a void fixed update. Now the reason why we go with fixed update is because fixed update was specifically designed for um, physics. So any form of physics that go inside your game, such as raycast and um, collisions of these things, need to go within uh, fixed update. So for us, we're going to create a region. We're going to call it motion. And then we're going to create a variable. So we're going to call the same variables we've always done, input dot get axis. And let's go horizontal. And then we're going to say var z is equal to input dot get axis. Um, go ahead and go vertical, you know. And then, of course, we're going to make our character able to move. So we're going to say rigid body dot move position is from our current position, current position, so transform dot position plus transform dot direction or transform dot transform direction and then we're going to grab our x zero on the y z then we're going to multiply that by time dot delta time multiply that by speed and there we go now our character is capable of moving now let me actually increase the size so you guys can see that a little bit I had somebody tell me about that uh, a couple tutorials ago and I keep forgetting about it okay so yeah as we, as you can see, we have all these cool things going on now. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's just the basics of grabbing our rigid body, moving our position from our current position, the direction that we want to move, and then multiplying it by time dot delta time and our speed value. Now, if we head back over into Unity, uh, drag and drop the script onto our player. So let me grab our player. You're going to see this little notice here. So that's pretty cool. We're going to go and set the speed up to like two maybe. And then we're going to hit. Oh, and before I actually do that, I'm going to realign the camera so we can actually see what's going on. So let me go ahead and do that. Uh, align this view. There we go. Cool. So we're going to hit play now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to press W, S, A, and D. So W, S, A, and D. And as you can see, our character is capable of moving. 
But let's go ahead and add in a object in front of the character so we can make sure that we don't see any form of jittering effect because that's that's exactly what we don't want, you know. So we're going to hit play one more time. And here we go. It's it's going to run into the object, oh, but it's not colliding with the object. So why is it not colliding with the object? So we're going to grab our player. So our rigid body, use gravity. Let's go ahead and create a plane so our character can actually land on it. So reset that. Okay, cool. That's all good. Make sure that we have our collisions going on. Freeze rotation. Um, we want it to be continuous. Then we're going to hit play. And now it should actually be able to hit and then just stop. Whoa, 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 whoa. People, I'm an idiot. <laughs> we need a capsule collider. Oh, God. Something so basic. Okay, yeah. Make sure that you do get your capsule on your character. Because that, that, that was causing us a big headache. Okay, so now it's going to work. So let's go ahead and run into there. As you can see, our character moves and then hits and then stops. You don't see any sort of jittering effect there, which is exactly what we want. So we can walk sideways into it. And it's not going to leave us any form of ugly... Uh, bounciness or anything like that so that's that's pretty cool we now are capable of just moving our character forward he stops and there we go okay so now since we have our character capable of all that let's go ahead and add in our movement function so we're or our speed functions so let's go ahead and close that down now for inputs we actually want to create a void update so let's go ahead and do that and we're going to create another region. We're going to call this inputs. So inputs. Oh, let me actually fix that. There we go. So here we're going to call all of our inputs. So we're going to create a sprint input. So let's go ahead and do comment that sprint. And here we're going to say if input dot get key. Let's say get key. Yeah, get key. Key code dot left shift now on a normal basis we would create an input for this in fact actually let's go ahead and do that so we're going to head back over into unity we're going to go over to edit if it loads up and then go over to project settings now within the new unity editor it allows us or the new updated version it allows us to be able to have all these in one um, setting which is super super cool um, so we're going to go over into inputs, go open up axes, and we're going to create a new a new version. So we're going to create 19. Here we're going to open up the last one. We're going to call this sprint. We're going to say the positive button. It's going to be left shift. And we could say the alt. Uh, I think the alt button should be like joystick button 10. I think I am correct there, but I could be wrong. Try to get this out of the way real fast there we go and I'm gonna go and just dock this real fast so, you know just dock it right there okay so now we have our input ready to go let's go ahead and head back over into our script and we're going to just call that so we're gonna say get button instead and then from here we're going to call that button so we're gonna just call sprint so sprint so whenever we press the sprint key we're going to activate or jump so we're going to say oh and we also want to say and and let's say speed is not equal to run speed that way it only activates once so then we're going to say speed is equal to run speed else if speed is not equal to walk speed then speed is equal to walk speed. So this allows us to be able to switch back and forth between run speed and walk speed. So let's go ahead and close that input down and then we're going to head over into um, where is it? There we go. And this time what we want to do is now adjust our speed values. So our walk speed let's say is 2, our run speed is 6 and then we're going to hit play. So what should happen here is that we're now going to be able to walk. You could see our speed value over here is 2. If I hold down shift, it's going to switch. And now, 
for some reason it is switching back and forth so we're actually going to fix that real fast i think it was because i added in that extra input uh, so we're going to just erase that and let's head back over here we're going to hit play one more time we got to make sure that we keep an eye on this just to make sure that it's not actually adjusting too much and as you can see we're running that's pretty good if we walk now we're walking so that's awesome as well and cool so now we have everything working the way we want it to all right so we have our character able to move around in circles move forward move backwards uh, but we still haven't had our character capable of turning. Now, granted, we could turn our character using our player controller script, but I think that'd be way better to be able to move our character based on our camera. Uh, so to do that, we're actually going to wait for the next tutorial to set up our camera, and we're just going to work specifically on um, the character motion right now. So the last thing we're going to be covering within this specific tutorial is the jump input. So for our jump, we're going to create a new void. So let's go ahead and create a region below our fixed update. And we're going to call these completed functions. So completed functions. This way we can keep all of our functions organized and separated. From here, we're going to create a void jump. So here inside this jump, we want to actually create an int called, or actually more like a float. And we're going to call this force. And then from there, we're going to simply plug in the values that we need. So we're going to say, okay, so rb.addForce. We're going to say transform.up. Multiply that by force. And then we're going to say force mode. Dot. In fact, actually, we could go and create a force mode here. So force mode type, there we go. And then we'll just plug in the value of type, and there we go. So I'm gonna create a public, or actually before that, we're gonna create a header. Uh, so let's go and do that. We're gonna call this jump settings, settings, and go ahead and create a header up here. Go to going to call that uh, speed settings let's go and erase this serialized field as well we don't need that anymore and inside or underneath this jump settings we're going to create a public float called jump force and we're going to create a public force mode call it force type then we're going to go underneath our inputs and we're going to Go ahead and comment, say jump. And we're going to say if input dot get button. And Unity automatically comes with a jump input, so you just have to put in jump. And let's go ahead and call jump. So we're going to go here. We're going to add in our force, so jump force. And of course, we want to add in our type, so what did I call it? Force type. Yeah, force type. And there we go. But the problem with this is that we're going to continuously be jumping up, which is not something we actually want to do. Um, so what we need to do here is we're going to grab a, uh, I guess you could call, we need to create a Boolean. So we're going to create a bool called is falling so is falling is going to determine whether or not we're falling or not uh, so we want to check that so we're gonna say and and not is falling then we're going to create a new region underneath our completed function region now here we're gonna call this collision and triggers so on void on collision stay we're going to say if not is falling, or if is falling, then is falling is equal to false. That way we reset it once we land. 
Okay, cool. I think that works. So let's head back over into uh, Unity. And it's going to update our script. So let me go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and start closing down some of these tabs here as well. So that way I can see. So there we go. Let's go ahead and close that, close that. All right, so as you can see, we now have our speed variable that disappeared, but we still have our walk speed and run speed. We have, let's actually change that down to four, by the way. Uh, we also have our jump settings, so jump force. Let's change that up to like five. We have our force type, and you could change it to any one of those. Uh, we're going to change it to impulse. And then we're going to hit play. So here we go. We're going to go and test this out and see what goes on. So we're going to hit jump. As you can see, our character shoots up into the sky. He's way up there. Let's change it down to two. Let's check it out. Okay, he's still going super high. Let's change that to one. Oh, that's the reason why. So inside our script, we forgot to say that he is jumping. So let's head over into our jump function. So avoid jump. We're going to say is falling is equal to true. That, that would have been advisable. Otherwise, we would have just kept jumping. It's probably what would happen the first time. Okay, so it's going to load up again. We're going to hit play one more time. One more time. I promise. I promise, guys. Here we go. We're going to hop. All right, our character's capable of hopping. There we go. He's not overly hopping again and again and again. Let's go to two. There we go. Now our character is capable of jumping any direction. So that's that's good. All right. So that's all we're going to be doing for this tutorial since we got our character capable of moving around, uh, being able to move forward, sideways, back, you know, running, and, of course, being able to hop. And you can also experiment with the type of force you want to use. Say, for instance, if you want to change it to force, Change it to like uh, maybe 400 or so. Or not. You maybe change it to like 300 maybe? Bye bye. Uh, you know, you'll, you'll figure it out. Just experiment. Find out which one works best for your character. Which one you like best. And of course, just design it the way that you want it to be. I right, hope you guys enjoy, enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, check out some of my other videos. If you have any questions, make sure to leave those in the comment section below. I'll be happy to get the, to those as soon as possible. And of course, if you uh, are, of course, waiting for the camera tutorial for this uh, specific video, make sure that you uh, wait for next week, I think. I've been pretty busy, but I'm going to try to get that out as soon as possible as well. All right, I'll see you guys next time.